YouTube for 12 years, but this year I reached 100,000 subscribers, which I am so proud of. But like most things in life, it's not always about the destination, but the journey to getting there. And when I look back at 17 year old me who started this channel, I felt like I was at the bottom of a mountain looking up at the top and I dreamed and believed that one day I could turn my hobby into my full-time career. In fact, I wasn't sure at one point. Take a listen to this. In this three years, it is a hobby and I do love what I do, but the big dream would be doing it full-time, but I don't expect that I'll ever get there. It would just be very, very nice to do it all the time. I love listening to that back because it was such a big dream and I made it happen, but I never grew really quickly. I never had a viral video. It was genuine hard work, commitment and passion to a platform that has been with me through my teens and my 20s and has shaped me into the person I am today, which I'm so proud of and I love that I'm able to sit here today and share a bit more of what that journey looks like. I am genuinely so proud of my channel and I'm delighted to share that this video is very kindly sponsored by YouTube themselves, which is a huge pinch me moment and opportunity for me. I cannot believe I get to say that and I'm so honoured that they want to work with me. My teenage self could never have dreamed that I'd be in this position and so to celebrate this big milestone and to welcome some new faces and catch you up on my journey and story, I thought it'd be nice to do a bit of a career Q&A and talk about YouTube as well. I have timestamps at the bottom, I'm going to be breaking this video up into some sections but I'd love for you to grab a drink, I just have a nice water because I'm chatting a lot so grab your drink and we are going to get into it because there's some juicy questions that I haven't answered before, so I hope you enjoy it. If you are new around here, hi, I'm Brogan. I make travel, home, and lifestyle vlogs, and I'd love for you to subscribe. And I think one of the best things about YouTube is actually the community that we have fostered here on this channel. It's one of the things that I get complimented on a lot, so you guys are very loyal, very engaged, and so I couldn't think of a better way to incorporate you into this video than asking you guys for your videos and voice memos. So thank you so much to each and every one of you that submitted something. I couldn't feature everybody but I loved doing this concept. It's been amazing hearing your voices and matching your names and faces and it's just a lovely opportunity to get to know you just that little bit more. If you've ever considered starting a YouTube channel let this be your sign and maybe some inspiration to click upload on that first video. Dream big because you never know where it might lead you and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how I grew my channel and turned my hobby into a career and made it on YouTube. The first voice memo came from Katie who I talked to a lot and she asked this. Hi Brogan, thank you so much for allowing me to ask this question and be on your channel. I'm just really interested in the before of YouTube. What sort of career were you doing before YouTube and was the YouTube career always in the pipeline for you or is this something that you worked towards over the years? Love you! Oh, thank you, Casey. Love you too. My career journey is quite long-winded. I started working when I was 15 and I did waitressing and retail jobs. I went full-time age 18 when I left college. I didn't want to go to uni. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. My first full-time job was working in retail. Some of you may remember those times. I worked in a baby shop and I vlogged because I worked for a family friend that let me film and do my other things on the side. This was also the time I started my YouTube channel and my blog and I started my own business called The Beauty Closet. I was very very ambitious and I used to sell jewellery and decorative pieces. I did that for like three years. After retail I moved in to be a sales and features editor at a small publishing company. I've done everything I needed to be doing this morning with my boss. His office is upstairs. You probably can hear me talking to myself and probably thinks what is she doing? After that I moved to a really big corporate company. I thought this was the dream job because at the time I had some great colleagues. It was very young, very cool offices. I worked in customer care and I also did a little bit of social media and I then moved on to do administration. I did lots of like spreadsheets and emails and organising people in places and it was that point that I really figured out that I was good at this. So I got another job also as an administrator, worked there for a year and a half but I only did four days a week. So in the middle of the week on a Wednesday and a weekend I took up another part-time job. I worked as an outdoor activity instructor which was completely different to any of my other jobs. I actually started in admin on the little cabin we had. Yeah it would take people around the course, it was like a treetop high ropes thing. I then moved over over to a bigger company that sold iced coffee. So some of you may remember my time through these jobs because I was vlogging and sharing a lot of it or filming outside of work in between my hours. And I loved my job there. I ended up moving my way up to a marketing manager position, which was 
really exciting and was that career moment that I was like, oh my goodness, this is incredible. But it was a lot. It was so intense. There was so much for me to be doing all the time. But it was at that moment where I decided that I really wanted to try with my YouTube channel. And I'll talk more about that in a bit. I ended up going self-employed and I was a social media manager. So I had like 10 clients. I would do their social media for like 20 hours a week. I had this amazing setup with my boss where she gave me this flexibility so I could spend half the week doing that, paying the bills on my flat, and then half the week basically growing my YouTube channel. I then meet Benji age 23, 24, and I got the opportunity to move out of my flat and live with him and save some money. And that was my crossroads moment where I basically decided that I was going to leave my self-employed work and just go fully with YouTube. So it took me seven years with lots of different jobs <laughs> that taught me lots of different things. And I've been doing it full time since I was 24. I'm now 29. So the last five years. So pretty wild career journey. That was a long answer to the first question, but that is basically how I got to where I am today. And also an answer to Katie, no, I did not know it was always in the pipeline for me. I just absolutely loved making videos. And I think even now I would still be making them as a hobby, even if it wasn't my job. I just genuinely loved YouTube so much. I was a real fan girl. I watched lots of other YouTubers and I was totally inspired to start my own channel. But that leads me nicely on to the next question. This next question came from Kelly and she sent this video. Hi Brogan, hope you're well. My name's Kelly and I had a question for you. How did you decide on the sort of timing that you put out that first sort of vlog your first content on youtube yeah how did you sort of build up your confidence and and the and the courage to just sort of be like do you know what i'm gonna do it this is it i'm gonna film i'm gonna edit and i'm just gonna upload it we absolutely love your videos in our house and take care Bye. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much, Kelly, for asking that. I also had another video from a really sweet girl called Lily. So thank you, Lily, for your lovely video too. There were so many that were kind of similar. How did I know when to upload that first video? Honestly, I do not know what came over me because I was very timid. I was never the kind of person that was in front of the camera. I didn't like drama or acting. I was always behind the scenes at dance shows, the girl with the clipboard and the quick change with all the costumes on my arms. You know, I was never in front of the camera. As you can tell I'm a bit of a rambler um, and um, I fidget as well so I'm gonna stick my fringe out of the way it's annoying. But I really loved photography so I had my first Canon when I was like 16, 17 and did a photography A level and I think that was like the start and I watched a lot of YouTube. I was watching videos on how to do my makeup, learning how to drive and then with my blog and YouTube I wanted to learn how to edit and how to change things on my blog and YouTube taught me so much. It was the place I went to for entertainment, community, inspiration and still to this day that has never changed. I watch more YouTube than any other platform. I was also kind of lonely at the time and I think in hindsight looking back I was looking for a bit of a community immediately from the get-go. I had friends that stayed at our sixth form at school and I went off to college and I didn't have many friends and I think uploading that first video I just wanted to connect with people. I wanted to share something that I enjoyed and that I was passionate about as well and in those early days I would get you know a few hundred views. I would talk to a handful of people and I remember their names, usernames, pictures. I made friends with other YouTubers quite quickly as well. Still to this day, I don't think there's ever a right time. You'll never be ready, even with as much practice or experience. There's just no moment that's going to be like, yes, this is it. I think you just have to go for it. The timing will never be right. <laughs> we have another video from Ben. What is a standout YouTuber moment where you're like, I can't believe I'm absolutely doing this. Ben is so sweet. He talks to me quite regularly. And I think there's so many moments. I can make a whole video on moments like that. I think the first moment was actually when I got recognized in public for the first time and I got asked to be on my local radio. I was starting to be recognized more. And even now to this day, Benj and I love getting stopped and chatting to you, putting faces to names. It's such an amazing part of it. But that was definitely the first moment that I was like, oh my goodness somebody knows who I am. <laughs> Skipping forward, I think there's been so many moments, but I won a Cosmopolitan Influence Award. I won the Influencer's Choice Award in 2016. That was a huge moment. I, I've won a few awards I'm so proud of. I've been a finalist and I'm always so grateful to be shortlisted, but that was a real standout moment because 
I remember other YouTubers winning the other categories and they were people that inspired me to start my channel and that was a real game changer because I was working full time and I just couldn't believe it. So that was really exciting. I think any time I've been able to travel has been like a wow moment for me because having that experience to be able to go somewhere, have a new opportunity to explore somewhere I've not been before. Any time we've been able to do our like sailing trips or cruises, skiing, like there's been amazing experiences like that. But the biggest one that stands out to me was genuinely when I was able to turn this into my job because I loved it so much. I would have carried on doing it as a hobby, but making YouTube my full-time career was a real wow and I really felt I'd made it. I mean, old me could never, never have dreamed. I really didn't think it was possible back then, but then it started to get more real as the years went on. You know you've made it as a YouTuber when it's your full-time job, um, so mine isn't. I will say making this video is also a little bit of a wow moment for me. <laughs> believe YouTube is sponsoring this video guys like makes me emotional but honestly nothing ever gets old for me I still love receiving a goodie bag or an invite to a local restaurant opening or a theatre review like everything is so exciting the lifestyle that comes with being a YouTuber is one of the best perks for sure there's been amazing memories all along and I'm sure you guys probably have a few moments that you've been with me for but yeah Lots of moments. We have another video from Soph. She sent this really sweet message. Hi Brogan, let me first off start by saying how much I adore your videos and I want to send my love to you, Benji and Bonnie. My question is, how did you stay so motivated at the start of your YouTube journey, oh, yeah. for example, when you was holding a full-time job down, trying to push out full-time content? Mm -hmm. What tips could you give someone that is aspiring to do what you did? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I also had very similar questions from Em and Becky, so thank you for your questions too. They were all very good and I loved hearing and seeing your voices, but what motivated me was genuinely the people. I would upload a video and have a few hundred views, maybe a handful of comments, but I would love engaging with people, figuring out what their tips were, what they liked. I made instant friends and connections. Even now, there is something so magic about a bond that I can form with someone and them telling me that I helped them with something or I inspired them to book that holiday or I was a bit of a comfort during a difficult time. These are things that really motivate you because you hear from people that are just like you. To be able to impact someone's day like that is just so lovely. So I think the community, the people, the friendships, the bonds that I've made from day one to today hasn't ever changed. I've only been able to do that through YouTube. I've not been able to to make that through any other platform. I feel like they're a little bit more generic. It's YouTube that I feel the most connected and I see your names and faces and comments every week and look forward to reading what you have to say. There are some of you that I know are so loyal and some of you that have been with me for so long and some of you that have joined just a few months ago, really appreciate it. So it wasn't a money thing at the beginning for me. I didn't make any money at the very beginning. It wasn't like it is today. It's much easier to grow and earn and make it your job, especially with things like live streaming and shorts and podcasts. YouTube has changed in terms of a platform where you can grow. But back then for me, I was just a really tiny little fish in a big sea and looking at all the other YouTubers doing these big things, I was totally inspired. It was my whole world and still is today. I will say that one of the nicest compliments I receive is when people tell me that I'm their comfort YouTuber. The fact you can stick me on, have me playing in the background, it feels like you're on FaceTime to a friend or you just get a little laugh out of Benji, Bonnie and I being a bit silly. So thank you if you tell me those things. It really does mean a lot. It actually leads me nicely onto this next voice memo that I got from Jason and Jason has been messaging me a lot over the years. I will say the first time I listened to this it made me really emotional and I cried but I have to play you this. Well I've been meaning to send you this one for a while but I felt creepy sending it because we don't actually know each other but in regards to your career have you had any sort of I guess interaction where you've seen how it affects people in a positive way? Because I'll probably tear up a little bit. I'm a carer. I moved back from London and Paris to look after my parents and my dad got sick. Mum has severe Alzheimer's now and she remembers my name every day but she doesn't remember a lot of stuff. But every week without fail, she goes, can we watch that pretty girl with the strawberry hairs videos? Every week broken. And I know you won't ever meet me or my mum but it brings a smile to me. No matter how stressful I get, I just want to say thank you. And if you've had any other experiences, just, I know it might seem silly making videos but you make people's week. And thanks, even if I spam you with creepy messages, you always reply nicely, so thank you. 
Oh, that's so sweet. Jason, thank you so much for sharing that. I actually need a drink. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't think that would make me emotional the second time. Actually, now just talking and reflecting on my YouTube career, that really hits. Like I said, we've been chatting for a while and to know someone's story like that has given me the opportunity to get to know you on a deeper level. Now I really understand when you tell me things about why you've loved my videos or watched them with your family. And I think Jason's story is actually just the bottom line of why YouTube is so special to me and why I do what I do. At the end of the day, all I want is my channel to be an escapism for someone and if you come away feeling inspired or entertained, then I know I've done a great job. So thank you. I think it's wonderful to be able to connect with somebody or have an interaction that affects somebody like that is so special, so, so special. Talking about this gets me in the feels every time. I always get emotional. <laughs> this next question came from Laura and I also had a similar one from Benedict. So thank you so much to both of you for asking. Hey Broken, this is Laura from the Netherlands. I've yeah, been following yes. your content for some years now and I really love it. I was wondering if ever there was a point in your career where you felt like you wanted to stop? Maybe um, there were insecurities or the pressure of, of delivering content or whatever. That's my question. Hope you can use it. Have a nice day. Bye. I did use it, Laura. Thank you. I thought that was a great question. The answer is genuinely no. I've never wanted to stop. There have been times where I've needed to just step back or take a moment, a breather, but I've never had an extended break. I've never wanted to quit. I've always loved making videos and people like Jason and his family, like things like that, just make me want to keep going. I feel so inspired when I hear something like that. I think I need to make more. I want to keep going. And there is never a time where I just, wanted to stop. I think they're very valid reasons, insecurities or pressures, of course, like Laura said. YouTube isn't easy. Like, it definitely comes with some hard work and dedication. For me, there was a lot of videos that I was just making so many because I just wanted to commit and show up and produce things and I made weekly vlogs for years alongside a full-time job which wasn't easy. I feel like there are pros and cons and highs and lows to all jobs but for me the pros always outweigh it and there actually was a moment when I was reflecting where my friend Grace who has a channel Grace Victory she told me she was already full-time she was doing it she was thriving in her career and I said to her I just want to be like you I just want to do the things you get to do and she said to me you just have to keep going you have to keep showing up you have to keep making videos because every video you make you grow you learn you become more confident you figure out what the audience liked you establish your own space and your voice and it was that that made me think okay if she carried on and she did it I can too and having that self-belief was what changed things for me and allowed me to actually make it into my job there has never been moments that I wanted to stop though no this next question came from Joe. Are there videos that you haven't created over the years because you knew they would be for views rather than content that was true to the channel that you wanted to create? Every video I've ever made has always been with my own passion and the audience interest first before views. I make a variety of videos on this channel, some like my travel and Disney and cruise vlogs that I know are gonna get more views than say my books or playing on my Switch, they're gonna be at the lower end because they're more niche to some of my audience, but it doesn't stop me from making them. I always wanna stay true to who I am and this channel has always been about showcasing a variety of things, my own personal interest too, because playing on my Switch and figuring out how to film and record that was a huge milestone and actually quite a challenge and a new skill set that I had to learn. And so, yeah, I think as I've grown and changed, my hobbies and interests and life has changed, but every video I've ever made has only been from a place of because I really wanted to make it. I also don't do clickbait. I don't really follow trends. I don't feel the pressure to keep up with everybody else. I'm not on every single platform out there. I do the things that make me happiest, that bring me the most joy, that feel the most right to me. I think if you're starting your YouTube journey now or you're, you're in the middle of it, don't lose sight of that. Just keep making things that feel right for you. And I always make videos that I enjoy watching. Sometimes I'll search for something and no one's made it, so I'll go and make it. <laughs> That's really exciting. I thought this next question was quite interesting and I think a lot of you are gonna wanna know the answer to this one, so. Bit of a nosy one, but I was wondering if Benji has now joined you full time on your vlogging career, and if so, how you found like navigating that as being a solo vlogger and now kind of like a couples vlogger and sharing the job, so to speak. 
Thanks very much. Come join us to answer this question. How am I the best Instagram husband in the world ever? <laughs> okay, so basically, <laughs> it started off really just with the surgery. I had open heart surgery, I had a tumour in my heart, it got removed, and obviously I had a few months where I couldn't do anything. And then from then, I started doing more things around the house, and then everything around the house, and we're at this point now where the things I can support you with at home, and with your channel mm -hmm. and with the things that we're able to do with, that comes through having a YouTube channel, I can now do more with you. I think this channel will always be mine. It's still yeah. my name. It's still me in most of the videos and then Benji in the travel ones or the home vlogs. But because we're going traveling next year, it kind of made sense that we're just sort of supporting each other in ways that we never thought we'd be able to do. So yeah, yeah. Benji's is around more. He can help me. We film a lot of ads together where he films a lot of the content with me. Physically behind the camera and also yeah. in front of the camera. Plus, I've been sort of teaching you the running of the business and just where I can delegate or ask for a bit of help. I'm not very good at it because I like <laughs> doing everything myself, yeah. but it's been amazing to sort of share that and have you on my team with me all the time. I feel like a relationship is a team. That's like the, that is what I see a relationship as. And yeah. not every relationship is 50-50. We cover each other's pitfalls. Or blind know. spots. Blind, yeah, blind yeah. spots is a better word but for it. But also there might be a time when we come back from our travels and we've been married that Benj might go on to do other things and have a different career path. But just for now, as it stands, this is the situation and I, well, it I works. I don't think we expected it to work as well as it yeah, has. It has. I feel like we're thriving. I feel uh. like we always used to say that our relationship was based off of me working away and getting to miss each other. Mm -hmm. But the more time we spend together, the more we go from strength to strength and thrive. Yeah, it's been amazing having you around supporting me and I appreciate it so much. So yeah, I'm glad that I get to help you in yeah. in, in other ways. We'll it's see great. what the future holds for us. So yeah, yeah that's the answer. There we go. Bye. <laughs> so this leads me nicely onto the next question, which was asked by Mads, and we talk quite regularly. She's so sweet. Hi, Brogan. Um, my question is that I always see you posting about your YouTube partner manager whenever you go to like YouTube specific events and stuff like that. So I was just wondering how you two work together, what she does for you, and how she supports you. This is such a great question, and I actually have three women that are on my team as well as Benj, obviously. So I thought it'd be a nice time to explain what they all do and how they fit. So let's start with my YouTube partner manager. YouTube have a partner program to help support creators, which is incredible. They've given me some amazing opportunities. I got to go to the Royal Garden Party at Buckingham Palace because of them. I also was on a panel recently where I was talking to up and coming creators and I've been invited to lots of like music events. I've seen Anne Marie and the Sugar Babes and done some really cool things recently. You can go check out my shorts if you wanna see some of the things that I've done with YouTube themselves. In terms of my partner manager, I basically got given one just before I hit 100k and the reason for that is because we were making a lot of noise as a community. A lot of you were sharing my channel and tagging me and encouraging your friends and family to subscribe and I think YouTube noticed and they got in touch and they were really excited that I was coming up to my big milestone and they gave me a partner manager who basically looks at my channel, gives me tips, encourages me to try new things, we look at what's doing well and not so well and she invites me to events and puts me forward for things so really grateful for her because we've only just started to get to know each other but she's been a huge part of my journey especially this year so as well as my partner manager I have a manager manager I'm signed to a management company and my manager there is amazing I previously was self-managed meaning that I did all the business side of things by myself so I do all the invoicing emails negotiations PRs meetings anything like that I did myself but now having my manager on board she goes and does all of that side of things giving me more time to create so if you look at my whole year you'll be able to sort of notice that my content has improved in the the quality I think, the variety and also the amount of times I'm able to upload. I personally don't think it's always about quantity but the quality of the videos but having delegated some things out, Ben supporting me here at home, my manager supporting me with the business side of things has given me that space so she is incredible and we work great together, we're a really good team, we're actually really good friends, we talk every single day and then finally I have a coach as well called Laura and Laura and I basically sit down together every month and we go through my channel, what went well, 
well what didn't what videos do I want to make we look at the brand partners we're gonna be working with and what videos would fit perfectly for them I'm always very intentional about what videos when you know seasonally what videos work and then the brand partners and having Laura is basically my creative second brain she brings ideas to the table she helps support with any big things I'm working on she helped me with this video for example so yeah it's not just me I have four people that are so pivotal in making this work with me and I'm grateful for each and every one of them alongside my youtuber friends as well having other creators in the industry that understand you and support you is a big part of it as well but yeah hopefully that helps you understand how things run outside of what you see I had quite a few similar questions Kelly asked a really similar question to Reeve and Teresa hi Brogan Benji and of course gorgeous girl Bonnie <laughs> just want to say hi hello and I just want to thank you for uploading loads of your home vlogs and getaway vlogs I look forward to them every That's week sweet. Thank you. Uh, my question for you Brogan is about vlogging actually. I own a fudge business and I'd like to speak to my audience a bit more on videos. Um, I get a little bit anxious and overwhelmed when I start doing them. Do you have any tips on how I can be more confident on the camera please? Thanks. I love that. The fact she actually sent a video as well, like you clearly already have some confidence there, which is exciting, but we'll go on to that. Let me play you Teresa's video too, because it was kind of similar, but they were really great questions. Hi, Brogan. So my question to you would be, how do you overcome the fear of vlogging when out in public, especially in really busy places? This is a good question. Um, it's something that I find really daunting when I even consider doing any vlogging or even any filming of myself so I'd love to know how you how you get over that so tips for being more confident on camera and vlogging in public I feel like these two go hand in hand I honestly think practice makes perfect I was not confident on camera at the beginning I look back and I'm so awkward I did a lot of ums and ahs I do think that you have to just keep going you get more familiar with how to improve the video the next time so the lighting the audio quality what the background looks like I really do think that that's how you build confidence is you have to keep going you have to keep making your next video look back at what went well and then you know move forward and that's why I love looking at the last 10 to 12 years because you can see the progression I had when I was literally 17 and I personally think I'm obviously a lot more confident on camera but the beginning I wasn't I was not vlogging in public is also one that I've not quite mastered either funnily enough you think it looks like I do but there are moments where I cannot simply pull out camera if I'm on the tube or you know I'm in a restaurant it don't it doesn't always feel right so I think the first thing to do is just filming from comfortable places like my car is a good one because no one can hear me maybe someone might see me as they walk past but not really or I stand in a corner a quiet corner where no one's behind me no one's going to be looking and the biggest secret is just to not look just focus on looking at the camera and don't look too much about other people around you because it will just put you off practice makes perfect and build yourself up and eventually when I'm in somewhere like Disney I sort of look at my surroundings and decide if it's the right time and when you're moving and walking with the vlog I feel like you're going too fast for anyone to really care because you're just you've moved on someone might be looking at you and go oh she's a vlogger but no one's actually going to interrupt you most of the time they just think cool because it's quite normalized now you know most people if they see someone vlogging they're like cool <laughs> this is another great question this came from erica hi rogan my name is erica and first of all i just want to say you are a huge inspiration to me for starting my own youtube channel and Yay. instagram account and awesome. my question for you is when you're traveling or at the disney parks how do you balance vlogging and being there in the moment that's something I'm really struggling with right now, yeah. knowing when to pull out the camera and when not to. I love vlogging so much that I wanna film and capture everything. So there's rarely moments where I'm like, okay, I'm just not gonna film. But I realize and appreciate that I don't wanna burn myself out. So it depends on the trip and the circumstances. I feel like the last big Disney trip in Florida and our big cruise vlog, I started the vlog at like 5 p.m. on one of the days and that just gave me the whole morning and afternoon to just just be in the moment, be present with Benj and have some time off of being on camera and thinking about what I'm gonna say all the time. So that's how I get a small break in those small moments. Or it might be like when we're on the Skyliner at Disney and I'm not filming the journey or the bus ride or a train journey, do you know what I mean? I then have downtime moments, but it is a hard balance. It's really hard to know when to film, what not to film, what to share. Even coming up, I've got my wedding day. Like how do I know what's gonna be something I wanna document or be on 
camera or off camera. There's just no right or wrong scenario there. Balance is always gonna be subjective. Like somebody might find filming every day really easy, but I personally find that quite difficult, which is why I don't make weekly vlogs anymore. I don't like being on camera and filming myself every single day. So to compromise and to find that balance, I made home vlogs instead during the pandemic and I've carried them through. And loads of you love the weekly vlogs. Loads of you love the home vlogs now. Some of you prefer one of the over the other. But for me personally, the home vlogs give me more of an opportunity to focus on one full day or sometimes two days. And then I can have other days where I'm focusing on other things for my business, making short form videos or going to London and doing other things. That's how I've personally found balance, but it's really trial and error. I still sometimes struggle in all honesty. I also had a lot of similar questions that were about the future and how I see the channel, but I thought this one from Marina was really, really great. Hi Brogan, my name is Marina. I've been watching your channel, I think upwards of like four years now Thank and you. it's been so inspiring to see your journey and like just to kind of have that inspiration and just seeing somebody start at a certain point and just have this growth and fulfillment in their career my question for you is did you always know it was going to work out and what inspires you moving forward what's your vision for your channel in the future years down the line thank you marina that's such a nice question to ask no i did not know it was always going to work out i clearly didn't as you saw the clip at the beginning i always dreamed and hoped that it would be my job but no i had no idea i just don't think that there's ever too late a time to try now is a great time to be making a YouTube channel and sharing things that mean to, a lot to you. Some of you may know that I am a volunteer for Girl Guiding. I'm also an ambassador for the Southwest of England Girl Guiding team and I'm doing a workshop this weekend as I'm filming and it's all about using social media to amplify your cause and use your voice online. And something that I wanted to stress to the girls was that your voice is important. What you wanna share and your digital footprint, how you show up online and in the world is a big part of who you become as a person. I I never regret any of the videos I put out. Some of them were better than others. I learned a lot on the way, but it's all been part of this journey to getting to where I am. It was only within the last few years that I actually thought it might be possible for me. I started having my 100K plaque. I screenshotted what they looked like. I Googled it and then edited out someone else's name, put my own name because I was really manifesting and believing that it could be possible. But it's so subjective, like how you deem us making it on YouTube is so different for each and every one of us like for me at one point it was being able to travel and do that and then making it into my job and having a really great engaged community making friends these are all things that made me feel like wow like this is it there's been so many moments along the way but no I never thought that it would all work out I had no idea and in terms of goals for the future I obviously have a big one coming up our world cruise that we're doing for two months I've never been away or traveled for that long so I don't know how I'm going to logistically work out filming editing and upload especially taking away from my own honeymoon or wedding day do you know what I mean I need to figure that out and that's going to be a whole new challenge after we come back from our travels I really don't know what we're going to end up doing because we're so hyper focused on our wedding day and this amazing opportunity that we get to travel imagine myself full swing back into videos again maybe we'll travel again and do other things I'd love to go skiing again I'd love to go to Canada dreams I have to want to go to Japan and do the other Disney sites that I've not done I would like to move house again at some point so that's where I see the channel going is just keep doing what I've been doing. I feel like my channel is at the best it's ever been and I'm really proud of it. Right now as it stands today I think my videos are good and I'm really really proud that YouTube thinks so too and asked to sponsor this video. So on that note thank you so much for asking all the amazing questions that you guys did, for being involved and helping make this video happen and to all of you that also asked questions that I didn't get a chance to feature. I'll definitely do this again. I feel like this was such a nice way to get to know you and see your faces and names. Thank you so much. Thank you to YouTube. Thank you to all of you that have been with me on this journey and help get me to where I am today. If you subscribed, if you've watched one video or 100, I think I actually have over 600 videos live on my channel and I've had over 20 million views, which blows my mind. Thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. I'm gonna end it before I get emotional and cry at you because this means so much to me and anyone that knows me even a little bit knows I love YouTube so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in my next ones. Bye.